Hey, good morning. So, um, we're on a little bit of a trip away this weekend. First time really doing any proper trip since the lockdown's lifted. Got a few things planned over the course of the weekend, and today we've gone slightly further up north. Um, don't want to say north so much because some people in this area get annoyed with me. Uh, but we've come up to the Midlands and we've come up to Cadbury World. So we're going to go inside, we're going to see what it's about, enjoy the experience, hopefully get a lot of chocolate and I hear there's a shop at the end with loads of discounted misfits and bits and pieces for chocolate so that I am so looking forward to. So let's go on an adventure. Let's take a look at some of the safety procedures we've got in place. We've got some distancing markers. We've got hand sanitizer just here. And here's some of the things. They're encouraging face coverings, washing of hands and things like that, and contactless payment. So this should be pretty interesting. Let's go inside. We're inside now. Um, the procedures are really good. They've got automatic temperature check cameras as you walk in so the tech is on point here you don't have to have a gun pointed at your head or anything like that it's fantastic sanitizer is literally everywhere um, everything's really clean and everyone's wearing a face mask as well the new government guidelines come into place today encouraging face masks indoors so it's pretty good i've seen the cadbury world store as well so i'm already getting excited for that um got our wristbands as well head in. Alright, the first section we're going into is the Aztec jungle and this is like the origins of cocoa. There's a smell in here as well. As you come in, like a sweet... So she's actually wiping down all the screens as we've gone past them. So it's pretty cool. We've got a display here which is showing you the value of chocolate uh, or the value of cocoa beans and how much they can get you. So two cocoa beans can get you a pumpkin, 10 can get you a rabbit, and 100 can buy you a slave, unfortunately. Um, so this gives you, this is 600 AD, this was when way back when this was what the value would be. As I said before, we got sanitizer everywhere. What sort of treasure shit is this? Same recipe, or enjoyed by guests. So as we go around, we've got some sort of 3D looking videos and they've also got an interpreter next to each one as well if you're hard of hearing so it's quite difficult to see but you've got a 3D effect in it so this is it's a real set and then you've got like the projection of the people onto the set so it's kind of like a Pepper's Ghost effect to drink our morning draft and again, we've got an interpreter as well. And so as my business began to prosper, I was able to attract fashionable customers to buy my goods. At first, it was very difficult, because I had to pay high taxes on the cocoa beans. And then, on top of all that, I had to move out of Crooked Lane and into another factory, here, in Bridge Street. That's when my brother Benjamin told me, and together we formed Cadbury Brothers. George introduced many benefits for the workforce, such as half-day holidays, the sick club, and many improvements in the factory. And Richard. Your new designs for our packaging were a huge success. Well, we had to try something different just to get ourselves recognised, Father. We became the only company in England that could produce such a pure cocoa essence. We advertised and were praised in medical journals who approved the benefits of our product. 
He called our new factory Bourneville, after the Bourne stream that ran through the land. And V, after the fashion for naming anything in the French style. So we've just come out of a film showing us the manufacturing process of the chocolate. This is the theatre just behind us. You have moving seats and rollers and air jets and heat and all sorts going on. Pretty cool. You do have the ability to not go on those moving seats if you have a disability or you're not comfortable with that. And uh, when we came out we had to sanitise our hands as well. So it was very, very thorough process. They're very good with all of the procedures here so far. Um, we're in another room now explaining the manufacturing process of each of the individual products that Cadbury have. So we've seen the roses behind us, we've got the buttons, Cadbury's cream eggs, which are peak. So this is what they're calling the time tunnel and this gives you a uh, an idea of all of the products and significant points in the Cadbury timeline. One thing they've also got the screens up as well in between so you're not too close to people. And I see an ice cream factory as well. This will be good. Doing some writing in chocolate. <laughs> so Becky here is writing the channel name. It actually, isn't it? There you go. A really badly drawn aeroplane as well. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> that's cool. That's that's the cover photo for the video, isn't it? <laughs> so we've got a magical Cadbury magical journey ride now. What do you want, darling? I want... Okay, you want a teapot with love? Useful as a chocolate teapot. Yeah. All right, we're in the uh, chocolate making section now. Um, so we can see them. Oh, 
So this is a it's dairy milk mixture, and you choose two toppings. And so we've got mixed with. Oh. And we can see them piping their designs onto the shoes. And the next section we come to is Advertising Avenue. So this will be probably a walk through history of the bars and the designs and things like that. This is back in the 1940s. Woohoo, <laughs> chocolate dog! Little chocolate dog. Now, this is one of my favorite shoes. <laughs> So we've now got a, uh, an interactive section with games. So we're harvest. growing the plants here, and now it's time to harvest. Do you want to press it? Go on. Ah, look at all them beans. So you've got uh, some more interactive sections over here. Oh, break all the fingers. Go on. After the interactive section, uh, we're finally into the gift shop. That's the end of the main exhibit. I think there's a couple of more history sections on the property that you can look into. But it's quite cheap, actually. 850 grams for five pound. Haven't you heard of Cadbury's Caramels? See as the thick Cadbury's milk chocolate melts without cream. You got merchandise as well. Your chuckle beans, which I've never seen these in shops, so these must be exclusive. How sweet are you? And then we've got the factory shop where you can bulk buy everything. We finished in the main building now at this point, went into the shop. Got some misfits, some caramel Fredos, and two boxes of the little, uh, the little egg-shaped fella, the little crazy-looking egg-shaped fella. And it was seven pound sixty something, so that gives you an idea of how cheap the shop is. We're going to have a look around, see what else is available. There's a kids' playground out the back. Got a pretty cool London four x four taxi and um, see what else there is. We're outside in the grounds of the Cadbury World at the moment. We've got the uh, playground here. The playgrounds have only just opened up a couple of weeks ago. We've got the 4D chocolate adventure. We've got a ice cream and hot drinks point. We've got the Bourneville experience just over here to our right. 
and a dance party with Fredo. So we've just been to the little outdoor hut. Uh, we thought you could just get ice creams and drinks there, but it turns out you can get hot food as well. So they do things like chicken nuggets and chips, hamburger and chips, and hot dog and chips. Everything in chips, basically. Um, hot drinks, ice creams, uh, obviously chocolate bars, things like that. And we've got here hot dog and chips, a slush puppy, which is like a like an ice blast type thing, and an oasis, an ice cream, and it came to thirteen pound fifty. So that's really reasonably priced for a tourist attraction. You're normally talking, you know, like seventeen, eighteen pound for that. Um, decent, decent hot dog as well, good size. The Slush Puppy is a pretty big portion and it's a bottle of Oasis as well. And the ice creams, you know, they're normally two quid in the shop, so it's a pretty good deal actually. We've done quite well. Mixed Ice Blast, red and blue. I don't know the flavours, but it's red and blue. So we're going to do this and then we're heading inside to the Bourneville experience and we've got the 4D chocolate adventure to go into as well. You can also tour the grounds and all of the factory and things like that uh, without going inside the factory per se. You can tour the outside and the facilities that they provided to their workers. So some of the some of the housing and the accommodation, the village that they built for their workers to try and give them a better life. Because when this was first established, obviously the working conditions were pretty appalling, but Cadbury kind of prided themselves in build in a very good, respectable working environment for their employees, so they gave them things like pensions and leisure facilities and swimming pools, gyms, that kind of thing. So it's it was very ahead of its time when it was established. So it'll be good if we get a chance to have a look around that. I don't know if we're gonna go around the full grounds, but we'll see, see what we can see. We're gonna head inside the 4D chocolate adventure. But here's some of the um, what the pre-show contains, so it's probably best not to do it if you've got certain conditions or you're, you've got an aggravated muscle or joint pain or something like that. Um, but again, they got a pretty good setup going in here. Don't think the wait is going to be too long, seeing as it looks like it's basically a walk-on. That's pretty cool that the door is a barcode. We've now made our way into the Bourneville experience. And this is kind of a walk through history of the Cadbury company. So we've got a timeline of all the houses in the village of Bourneville. And here we've got a full model.
This is the cat breed. You can see all the leisure facilities that they've got. So they've got the football ground, they've got the park, the tennis courts, swimming pool, greenhouses, things like that there. Even more football grounds. So 21, this is the, down here is the outdoor pool. You've got a lake. So they actually created a full village for their workers and you know, at the time this was completely unheard of. So here we've kind of got a walkthrough of history of all of the packaging and things like that. So the roses tins, as you can see they were pretty big previously and they've now, they've now shrunken quite significantly over the time. These are a trip down memory lane, pogs. They used to be everywhere. Different pencil cases. And all the teddy bears and things like this. So these would be all the mugs that you'd get with your Easter eggs. So these ones at the bottom, they regularly come with Easter eggs here in the UK. Star Wars limited edition themed things. And uh, if you look behind the lightsaber, it's, uh, it's like a tube that you keep like buttons and things like that, but it's shaped like a lightsaber. Now we've got jigsaw puzzles and it really gives you an idea of the scope that Cadbury had. Little souvenir cases of chocolate. And these are all royal ones, so the Queen's Silver Jubilee. Prince of Wales, Charles and Diana's commemorative wedding, Andrew and Fergie, and again the Silver Jubilee. So it gives you an idea, you know, they were quite a significant part of British history. And this is a full timeline of their packaging. And these are the most recent ones. So you can see it's kind of got a, they've, they've all got kind of a similar vibe to them. The Cadbury writing's pretty much stayed the same throughout the years and all ties in together. So we finished up in Cadbury World for today and we've had a look around the actual Bourneville village itself. We walked up to the the men's and women's like playing pavilions and things like that. They've got cricket areas, they've got swimming pools, all sorts. Um, like I said, this was very much geared up for, you know, progression. And it was pretty good. They had their procedures really down to a T. Cabri World, come and visit it. They know what they're doing here. They've got temperature checks, face masks, everyone's wearing a visor. As soon as you leave anything, as soon as you leave an area, they are cleaning it straight away. They're sanitizing the area. So it's fantastic. It's really good. And it's definitely somewhere that I think you should come. Even if you're, even if you're nervous, it's quite cheap. It's a good day out and you know, you get to experience everything. The 4D cinema, something a little bit different, movement of the chairs, probably not best if you've got motion sickness um, because of the glasses and like I said, the chair movement, things like that. But overall, it's a pretty good, pretty good day. And it's definitely, it's definitely somewhere you should come. So if you've enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to be notified when we post a new video. 
we'll see you on the other side. Thanks.